Oh, is that right? You gonna get who? We gonna get you. <laughs> 300 within three years to about 5,000. The music by the people, the, the rap music that was changed to Christianity. They were like breakdancing and it was like rapping. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. They're reaching the homeless, they're reaching the needy. They're taking in people that nobody wants to take in. It's the good news, it's the gospel, it's soul winning, it's outreach. We started something there was nobody doing what we did. How Jesus was with the disciples, you know, they're foul mouthed fishermen, dirty. Phil was bringing them in left and right. Well, guess what? They still had their cigarettes. They still had their little meth. They still had their little drugs. He's the first one there to pick you up. He's the first one there to tell you that things are going to be OK. They had a big crowd, a lot of motorcycles, a lot of noise, a lot of wild and crazy worship. They got a ranch, they got horses, all this great, beautiful stuff. And they'll get you off drugs and stuff, but it's all about Jesus. It's just been such a beautiful thing since Jesus has crashed to my life. The real deal. The absolute real deal. Step freeze back, wait over. Same Christ, new crew, make over. The devil had his turn, game over. Now what we gonna do is take If we had the exact number of people he's led to the Lord, it would just blow our minds. That guy's a soul winner. Had I not met that man, if God not put him in my life, I wouldn't be right here right now. Everywhere he goes, he wins souls. Man is from God, of God, and loves God. And I'm getting calls from the police department saying, what's going on down at the church, Wiley? You got all them motorcycles, all those gangbangers. And I said, no, we don't have gangbangers. We got set free. Man. I see God, Jesus, shining through him. Shock of shocks, a family is disgruntled. And she does not want to admit that, mainly because she was told not to admit it. Hey, you come against me, I'm going to take care of this precious thing. They're not fitting in, so it must be a cult. That was utter nonsense. It was not a cult. Fong is convinced that Pastor Phil could be the next Jim Jones or David Koresh. He seems to fit the same M.O. We didn't hold people in. We didn't... Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is libelous, slanderous. It has caused harm and damage. If somebody talks about my dad, we're just going to punch him in the face. You know, forget all this, like, oh, we're just going to pray for him and all that. You'll have to pray it through, Pastor Phil. But this old German, I'd say sue the bastards. Pastor Phil Aguilar agreed to move with three months' notice back when he signed a lease with the Anaheim Redevelopment Agency in June of 1990, an agreement hammered out with the help of former Mayor Fred Hunter. The day that Pastor Phil decided to say he wasn't going to be doing church no more, the whole stadium was packed. It was like 3,000 people there, and nobody knew they were coming for a last service. Well, I sensed it. I sensed there was a woman. If you didn't see it, don't repeat it. Their heads got a little too big and forgot that Jesus has put them where they were. God has to get his attention through a raid, an arrest. It takes a while to get his attention. But when he does, he immediately knows it's God and he immediately humbles himself. In the Bible, people that made big mistakes had really big comebacks. And the bigger the setback, the bigger the comeback. And that's what we see in the life of Phil Aguilar. You just tell me when. Begin the streets. 